Hey guys, it's Brandon from Ruby Red Farm. Uh, so things didn't quite go according to plan. Got sick, had the flu, um, the whole house had the flu. So it slowed the progress down and then we ran into some really cold weather. We got the coop to a usable state. Come along, check it out. So it's kind of funny for me to look at that picture before where we started compared to where we're at now. It's definitely not a two day project or anything. This, you know, if I would have dedicated all my time to it, this probably would have been about a four or five, you know, maybe a six day build. Uh, obviously we're not done as you'll see later we get in the video, but um, I guess the, the big milestone with, this portion of the video is we're, we're starting to set some trusses and getting the uh, the back wall around the nesting boxes all set in place um, with sheeting and everything. You know, I go back and, and do some trim up on it with just a circular saw. Um, that was just a quick and easy way of doing it. Could have used uh, or could have actually laid it all out and, you know, used it all on a bench, but figured it was just as easy to cut it all on the, the coop. So a couple of things with how we build our coops, you, you know, in other videos you've seen our other coop, our other coop is, is a little bit similar to this, uh, but it is a little bit fancier. This one's more of a, a u utilitarian type approach. Uh, it's basically just a big, big shed on wheels. Uh, and there, there's a couple of reasons why I've chosen to go this route on both of these coops. You know, they're both, both big coops and we've got quite a few birds, but, um, this one in particular, you know, we, we figure it'll probably be in the 200 to 300 range. Just to kind of pick up where we left off, basically got all the siding on minus a couple of little pieces. We're going to work on that tonight while we still have some daylight left, which is not going to be for long. I'm going to roll some lights out. Hopefully get a little bit of work done uh, while, while I can. And hopefully not freeze my butt off because it's like 30 degrees out here tonight. Funny to me at that time that I was complaining about 30 degree weather. You'll see later on in the video. It got a little bit chillier than that. Um, last couple days it's been sub-zero. Eh, well, single digits, low single digits to sub-zero temperatures. Um, just doing some final final work here on the trusses. Uh, there was a little bit of uh, trimming that needed to take place on the last couple trusses. And I'm really not sure... I. You know, hindsight, I should have gone back and checked my measurements and make sure that nothing was bowing out. Again, just using a circular saw to do my trim up. And then this this portion, I'm really just using a handful of scrap of the T111 to finish it out. The T111, if you've ever worked with it, it's, it's a nice material, as I mentioned before. It's just rather on the expensive side. So wherever you can utilize it the best. This portion of the build here is uh, the back doors for the nesting boxes. And for that, I basically took the, the cutouts from the, the siding and trimmed them out with two by fours. With those two by fours, I mounted some hin simple hinges to them. Uh, the, the reason being is because it does seal up real nice, as you see in this picture here. You know, I, I don't know that we show this here in the video but this this last little truss if you will is just for the overhang on the both ends of the coop yeah it's it's gone at this point it didn't show up but um went ahead and put that on there that's more of a, a looks thing but it also helps with water Just enough sheet metal to get the job done. It only waited how long to finally be able to use it? How long is it building it up? Two years? Three years? Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Hey, uh, so quick update. We got a nice uh, winter storm coming. Um, it's about 20 degrees outside and 30 mile an hour gusts. So in the shop, it's not terribly warm, but it's not terribly cold. So I'm going to be working in here most of the day. Uh, I think the wind's supposed to die down this afternoon, but game plan for today, get all my sheet metal cut for the roof. 
and then get my roost built and hopefully installed in the coop. I'm gonna just peek outside here again because it's cold and windy and snowing. So, um, so if you can see here, we've got pretty much everything done except for the roof and the front door. So we're gonna get the everything cut and ready to rock and roll for hopefully later on tonight. We'll we'll see. Those electric cars. <laughs> Please take note. So the door is going to have a roughly inch and a half overlap all the way around. Right now I'm just doing a frame. I'll lay a piece of that T111 down in on top of and screw right down to it. We'll mount the hinge and door latch and everything. We have to call it fits just for battery life. The problem with working in the cold is anytime you hit something or bounce your hand off of something, it hurts. <laughs> Sounds like an old man. No comment. It's gotta get treated around here. <laughs> What we're putting together here is the door. Again, it's very the main door. Uh, again, this is very simple construction. It's it's basically just the the cutoff piece from that section trimmed out with two by fours for cutting sheet metal. You know this this metal is old. It is it is steel. It's not an aluminum or it's old galvanized sheet metal. You know they we used a circular saw with a the uh, DeWalt metal cutting blade on it. For attaching the roof, I used, I think they're two inch uh, sheet metal screws. And I basically just attached it to all my nailers throughout. Hey guys, so uh, got the roof on, uh, got my ridge cap on. Uh, this sheet metal we used was from a uh, old barn. It actually used to sit right here uh, where our new barn's at, our new shop's at. That barn was old and decrepit. We saved a bunch of the, the lumber out of it, but we also saved the roof out of it. So we've repurposed it. We've repurposed it for this this coop as well as the old coop. Um, so so yeah, it's not watertight, but it's about as good as it's gonna get for a chicken coop. Tonight I'm gonna to keep working. I'm gonna put a door on and I'm gonna put at least one set of brooding bars in. Uh, it's supposed to get really cold this next week and I would like to get all of our young birds that are in a our pseudo temporary coop into here as soon as possible. So we're gonna try that. We'll see. Everything is harder when it's cold, as if that needed set. Yeah, for some reason this board's kind of warped. Yeah. And it's kicking out about an inch, which is no good. We gotta cut the wind off completely in this coop. So we're gonna cheat it a little with the latch. That worked great, actually. That yeah. closed it right up. With one screw. <laughs> 
just a standard gate latch. It's even got a spring feature. <laughs> the nice thing about these though, is you can put a carabiner clip in there uh, to latch it in case you have predators, raccoons and such. Yeah. Um, you don't have to worry about it. The portion that we're building here are the roosting bars that go, that'll go in the coop. This is temporary for now. I'm going to go back and, and revise these later uh, once we get, you know, some warm, warm days here. Ran out of battery on every drill battery that I have for tonight. So, power of the night. We're not going to move birds tonight. We'll try to move them tomorrow. Hopefully, we can uh, get out here, get this knocked out after church tomorrow. And then we'll start moving birds. So, cold, cold. For the roosting bars, we're using two by threes. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive, and there's no reason to have two by fours in here. They're just, they're too, they cost too much more, and they're just that much heavier. So, it's uh, currently about zero degrees outside. So we want to get this coop ready to rock and roll so we can move birds from our temporary coop into it. The last, pretty much the last step is to get the ladder out of there and the roosting bars in there. Now, one thing that we've kind of run into is, uh, well, weather-wise, um, yeah, it's kind of terrible and we really need to get everybody moved. Um, so a part of that is, is the coop's not 100% ready to rock and roll, but it's good enough to at least get us moving, uh, take the birds out of the garage, get the birds out of their temporary coops, and then I guess just make it through the rest of the winter. Part of that is, is it doesn't have the two windows on the outside. Uh, we'll add those in later. That's not a big deal to add in later. And then also the doors for letting them in and out. I'm gonna add that in here later this week. Uh, this week, I wanna keep them pretty much locked in there, get them used to where their home is, A, uh, so we can set about uh, that homing beacon that Courtney's mentioned in other videos, but also uh, Because it's going to be so sticking cold this week We want to keep them kind of contained into that the coop so they're, they're nice and toasty and the paint wise paints not done yet obviously uh, Paint will come later. It's gonna have to wait until we're at least above freezing and have enough dry spell that we can actually get out and paint So we'll get those two done here later on the spring uh, One other thing that I eventually want to put down is some vinyl flooring in it Just makes life a little bit easier to clean. We're gonna go ahead and rock and roll with the way it is I'm gonna throw the roosting bar in there. Go grab a couple bales of straw get that thrown down in there and then uh, We'll be pretty much ready for some chickens out into the frozen tundra that is in the end. One thing that we've done with our roosting bars is I make it hinge so we can fold it down to collapse it and remove it. Makes it a heck of a lot easier to clean. Problem is, is it's kind of it. Functional. Our first couple tenants here. Got another 70 or so to move. There you go, ladies. I think they like their new house so far. They are all set. They'll be here until they're used to this building being in their house. And then we will move them out into the pasture with their own netting. Weather didn't cooperate. Uh, as you can see, it's awful cold here, uh, which I think I've mentioned a few times throughout this video. but. Uh, the coop is to a usable state, uh, so 
couple things that we have left. We have to finish up the uh, nesting boxes in the back. They're about functional, but the birds that we put in there aren't quite the laying state yet, so we're not too concerned about that. Right? So finish up the nesting boxes. Got to put the windows in the side of the coop. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's about two degrees here in Indiana right now, so the windows in the side of the coop aren't really necessary. And then obviously we didn't get to painting it. Uh, just simply, it's too stinking cold to paint. So get around to the final touches here sometime in the near future. So stick around for a part three of this video. Again, if you like this video, you like the content that we're putting out, please hit subscribe. Uh, if you want to see something in particular, definitely drop a comment or send us a message and let us know. Um, you know, we're always open to input on any of this. It's This is all new to us, so we're still trying to figure it out as we go. This is Brandon from Ruby Red Farm. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Hey guys, it's Brandon from Ruby, Ruby Red Farm. Hey guys, it's Brandon from Ruby. I can't even say Ruby Red Farm. It's so cold. Again, this is Brandon from Ruby, Ruby Red Farm. This is Brandon from Ruby. Yeah, I can't even say Ruby Red Farm. Ruby Red Farm. Ruby Red Farm. <laughs>